Meeting to order, please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We shall have roll call, please, Stacy. Yes. 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 Well, greetings, everyone. Thank you for coming. Um, we will start tonight's meeting uh, like we start, or I start, we start, I, we, uh, every meeting, uh, with Mayor Waller's quote for the day. Um, today's quote comes from famous baseball player Babe Ruth. You just can't beat the person who never gives up. Okay. Words of wisdom from Babe. All right, tonight uh, we have some guests here. The next port, oh, first of all, before we go, we have to uh, make a couple of additions to our agenda and then we'll have to entertain a motion to approve. So we have, uh, I'd like you to add an item B and C under ordinances and resolutions. Uh, the first one is a resolution accepting a bid and awarding a contract for the DC FAST charger project and then uh, item C is a resolution accepting a bid and awarding a contract for the electrical facility upgrade project so those two will be added to ordinances and resolutions are there any other additions or corrections from the members of the council hearing none I'll entertain a motion to approve the agenda I will so move. I'll second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve the agenda. So uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. All right, so we shall move on to the citizens' comments portion of the meeting. And this is the portion of our meeting where we allow uh, people to come up and approach the council. And I believe. Uh, Gene, you're going to be the spokesperson for the group for the most part? Okay. Yeah, if you want to just come up to the mic, state your business, and uh, we'll go from there. Uh, I'm Eugene Croshaw. I live at 11 Sunny Slope Road. I have some pictures. I don't know if you would like to have them for reference. Sure. You got it. Take whatever you got. Thank you. Thank you. We have a property in our neighborhood, 506 West 11th Street, and this is the backyard view of that property. And as a neighborhood, we became concerned about it. And back on May 7th, we sent a communication to City Hall and said, we'd just like to bring this property to your attention. We'd like to have you take a look at it. We think maybe it's in violation of junk ordinance. Maybe it's in violation of a nuisance ordinance. But please take a look at it. And if it is, do what you need to do with it. And if it's not, just let us know and share your viewpoint with us. So we thought it might be a junk type thing because in the city code, junk is defined as usual lumber waste resulting from building construction, felled trees, tree branches that are not limited or not immediately processed for lumber. And under nuisance in the city code, it talks about nuisance means and includes maintaining or permitting a condition which unreasonably annoys, and I'll skip dot 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 the comfort or repose of the public. So we just sent that into City Hall and didn't hear anything, didn't hear anything for about a month, at which point I emailed Kevin and said, hey, we haven't heard anything on this, so I sent him a copy of it. And I believe he may have forwarded it to the city manager who called me and said, hey, they have got it. They were aware of it. They were pursuing some unlicensed vehicles in the driveway on front of the street and some patients have been issued. 
and I mentioned to her that, well, what you really need to see is the backyard, because they're just a pile of, in my opinion, junk accumulating there that the city should take a look at. And she did mention the problem of going on private property, and I offered to say, hey, you want to see it? You can come through my yard, you're welcome to do that, and have somebody take a look at this. And so, and again, we left it at that. She said it takes time to um, process things. And then again, we, I think it was this past weekend, I noticed that there was a pickup with a trailer in the backyard below the stuff, and they were unloading this and adding to the piles that are already there. So I sent out an email on Monday letting everybody know, hey, this is stuff. And the other thing that's going on there is they don't mow the yard. These pictures were taken early May, and it doesn't look too bad, but there's grass down in there that's more than needy. They did attempt to mow it once, but only mowed a portion of the yard. And there are things laying in the yard, like in the lower picture on the right-hand side, you can see a roll of chain link fence. And there's a cement block standing there. It looks like, I don't know, gutter or piping or something. In the far lower left-hand corner of the bottom picture, there's a white thing. And there's some like cement, almost like curb stops that have been pushed up under the lilac bushes. There's also some junk fence under there. In the far northwest corner of the property, there's a big brush pile that they shoved in there. But anyway, our request was just for the city to take a look at it. And the city needs to, the city is in charge of enforcing ordinances, we're not. So we just wanted to take a look at it and do it, or just let us know, hey, no, they're fine, you know. So that's where we're kind of at. They're still adding junk to it. The, the grass hasn't been mowed. Um, I think traditionally the city has sent out mow your lawn letters or something like that. And then if they don't do it, the city does it, you know. So anyway, that's our concern. That's the concern that I'm talking about from the neighborhood. And I have some of my neighbors here if they'd like to speak, I'd be happy to let them. Thank you for your time this evening. I appreciate you, you coming you. in, Gene. And man, yeah, I'll invite anyone else. And if you have new information, that would be great. My name is Jim Pugh. I live at 17 Sunny Slope Road. Fortunately, I've got a tree blocking the majority of this junk. Gene doesn't. <laughs> so uh, he's seen quite a bit more than what I am. Uh, the one concern that I would have is I did observe the uh, resident out digging um, around some straight up and down vertical uh, pallets. And I think he's building a structure. And I don't doubt very much whether he does have a building permit to do it, and if he does, it's sure not up to go. I don't know for sure what he's storing there or if it's being attached to the garage, but uh, that would be a, a concern that I would have also, as well as what Gene has uh, brought to, to light. Uh, it's an eyesore, and it's affecting our property values. Um, I'm getting to the age where if she doesn't kick me out, I might have to sell the house pretty soon. Uh, and uh, I don't want the property value to go down. So um, the thing I'd like to also emphasize on it is that Gene had mentioned it, that uh, you know we're not the ones to, to do the enforcement. Um, we need somebody out there that has some authority to take a look at it, to determine if it is in violation of any ordinances and uh, what can be done about it. So I thank you for your time. Thank Thanks, you. Jim. I appreciate it. Anybody else have anything new or they would like to add? I appreciate you coming in. It, uh, just so everybody kind of knows, we won't probably take immediate action on it tonight. You know, we bring when you bring things to to the table, and then perhaps uh, we'll be addressing it in the very new future. And I know uh, I'll just speak to that in general. A lot of times, people. Uh, things don't move as fast as everybody would like, uh, myself included, uh, really in that. But uh, this is something I think that the city council is probably going to have to address in more detail just to put maybe clarification into that ordinance. Maybe it's something we look at and amend. And, you know, that would have to be, you know, of course, uh, 
approved and you know just solicit input from everybody because we want something that works for all of us in our community and right now it just in certain cases it doesn't look like things are working like we intended them to so appreciate you coming in becca do you have anything to add to that is there anything that we've done we are working with the sheriff's office and the city attorney on trying to to mitigate the problem so like I said in my steps. yeah, like I said in my email reply back, you know, if you have more pictures, more, more, um, they want specific. You know, do you have things that come into your yard? Do you have smells that are coming from it? Some of those, if you can, let me know, and and we can get those to the city attorney so they can start building, building a little bit of a case for this. Um, but we are working. It 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 does take time. They do have you know, proper channels of trying to do process, trying to, to mitigate the problem. And usually that comes with days and, and months, you know, depending. So um, we are aware of it. We are working with the sheriff's office. We have sent letters to him, so. Grass, if it's over, letters have been sent. I don't know if this address I don't has, know if this has, but, has, have but we do go. Yep. We have sent out letters. And once it gets to a stage they have, I believe, seven days? Ten. Ten days from when they receive the letter. So, like you say, it, it, it takes time on some of it. And it's it's been a while. Obviously, the picture's from May, and you've, you've been working on it. But there are portions of the yard that have not been managed. OK. Well, it's like, I, you know, I, like I said, I think we're going to have to take a look at the ordinance itself and probably dig into it a little bit in more detail. Uh, maybe seven days of being too generous. Uh, you know, there's a lot of ways we can go with this. But, you know, in my mind, we live in Minnesota, grass grows, and in the winter it snows. We have a snow ordinance, we have a lawn mowing ordinance, but for whatever reason, there seems to be not only this property, but quite a few other residents in town that don't, either they don't know or they don't care. And I think it's probably more the latter, but that's gonna be our challenge here. To, to come up and work that through. So we appreciate you bringing it to our attention. Any other discussion from anybody? Otherwise, we'll move on. Okay. Hearing none, thank you for coming in. You're, if you want to hang around, you sure can. Otherwise, <laughs> <laughs> otherwise supper's on, right? Thank you, guys. Thank you very much. Thank you, guys. You're welcome. At this time, we'll invite uh, Joel Quam from Bremer Insurance. He's got a presentation for us. Thank you, Mayor. Good evening, council members. Great to see everybody again and appreciate uh, allowing the time and, and being able to serve you on, on behalf of myself and, and all of us at Bremer. Um, you know, not that insurance conversations are, are any fun and anybody's <laughs> listed to do. This year especially is, is a challenge as a broader market. So I, I'm going to discuss in, in two senses what the broader market is, is receiving the challenges and a vastly more favorable outcome that the city is receiving through the league. And, and frankly, I wish all of my <laughs> renewals were, uh, were what the city is. And, it, and it, it's not by chance. There's good reason for it as well. But um, I also share in terms of, you know, you're all facing renewals in various regards. So some good things to keep in mind for businesses or, or personal homeowners. So this I've been sharing with my clients and, and certainly those from a, a public municipal space. But catastrophics, the hurricanes, the, but, but what most people don't realize and how much has stacked up in the Midwest is, is the severe convective storm and thunderstorms. And that's really hit, especially the Minnesota market. And we're seeing it drastically in homeowners, but for every business city involved uh, property. So 2023, this highlights on page two, it's, it's the worst storm year on record for billion dollar events and of 28 of them. And that surpassed the previous record in 2020 uh, at, at 22 events. So frequency is not on anybody's side, and frankly, things, we're seeing inflation, insurance pays for, 
cheaper stuff, and stuff has not gotten cheaper. So ultimately, what it what it means to the insurance mechanisms at large is they've been paying more in, in claims than they have been collecting the premium. And specifically in Minnesota, apart from the league, which is on the own bucket we'll talk about, six out of the last seven years, insurance companies writing in Minnesota have lost money. The broader market in 2023 uh, posted a, a net underwriting loss, so claims in the premium of, of 38 billion, and that uh, followed up last year in 2022 of 26 billion. So net insurance companies are losing money, so they are for-profit companies by and large, again, the league itself. So they only have a few levers they can pull. They completely get out of the market, which we've seen in some instances, or they raise rates to get back to profitability and or change structure of deductibles. And that very much is happening. So it, it, you'll see on, on, uh, on page three. But coming into last year and into this year, the, the average, the normal rate increase that we're seeing is about 20%. Um, and that's following a lot of property. When we bring it back uh, to, to your renewal, Net, it, it's less premium, so that's always a positive, but when you look under the hood, not only is it less premium, rates are virtually flat across most lines, and specifically property, you actually, the lady's is taking a slight rate decrease, which again is not normal in today's market for the reasons I shared of, of storm. So it, it's, that's by and large why the league was created and its formation was only for Minnesota cities. and. Uh, uh, they understand and they're dealing with all these same challenges, but they work it into the system and, and they price for it and they, they very much more take a middle of the road approach. And, and we see that in favorable renewals when it's just really not the normal. So on top of that, when I mentioned structure or, or uh, changes that the insurance companies impose, a lot of folks, if your buildings are over 15 years old, your roofs will not get replacement costs anymore from a lot of insurance companies. The league is not doing that. It's full replacement cost. Um, in addition to the dedicated loss control tools, resources, that's for and that you guys utilize. And, and really, um, and kudos to staff and, and, and Whitney, very proactive in doing the things that we want to see as your agent advisor to help push the league and in, in your powers that be to get your very best renewal. Because uh, it's a two-way street. They need to see that everyone's doing their part. Uh, and, and the more things you do proactively, you know, namely on work comp and, and those things, will just drive results and experience mod and things. So when, when you're looking at your overall renewal, again, that rate decrease by and large, less premium, the only reason you'll see a change in your property is because the lead follows through their appraisal company of what cost of construction is doing. So it's a roughly 5% inflationary change for your limits. So that's the only reason you'll see a, a change in your property premium is just because they've, they've raised your limits, uh, which is which we do want to see as well. All other lines are, are, are flat, and we can certainly go into it. And you, you saw a, a nice decrease in your work comp, and that was related mainly to rates. Uh, your, your experience mod is pretty flat, and that's claims performance. Um, and as well as we do a deductible analysis every year where we analyze various levels to see what the cost benefit is. And uh, uh, that's provided, but we found again that for this term, a, a no deductible is the, is the most uh, uh, logical option, but we'll look to, and it depends on how claims are performing and, and things along those lines and what the premium difference would be for the deduct deductible levels. A thing that, uh, uh, FYI more so is the league really is focusing this year on cyber incidences as they've seen a quite an uptick in 2023 for their cities at large. And so they have a full team and actually a dedicated person uh, who has a cybersecurity background that's made full available and, and who the city has met. And so we'll be encouraging that as well to continue because that's it's a very real risk we face and, and more so when you're looking at infrastructure type of mechanisms that's tied into IT and cyber of those getting hacked, those getting taken down. So they're paying attention to it and uh, for, for every city's benefit because they have seen cyber incidents, cities getting hacked, we've all heard about it in the news and, and that's not going away. So we'll continue to look at that. Um, apart from that, there is nothing, I would say, out of the normal uh, glaring or things to consider. Uh, apart from, you know, it really is, uh, it's a great renewal, all things considered. Um, 
and then food for thought things on, on, on your homeowners personally. Check your provisions, check your roof, um, check your deductibles, because a lot of times you're, those are just sliding through in a letter that you might uh, have quite a bit of, of a coverage change. So would open up any pending questions, but uh, for, for consideration approval as, as presented in the renewal amount of, of 284.631 for, for all lines. Thank you. Sounds good. Less is always better. You bet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it's a pretty good report. Thank you. Any questions from council? Hearing none, uh, we shall move on then. Uh, we have no public hearings tonight. We shall move on to our reading and approval of minutes. Uh, we will start out by uh, with the May 28th, 2024 regular meeting minutes. I will move approval of the regular minutes from our last meeting. I will second. All right, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor of approving the regular meeting minutes from May 28th, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. And we have the same minutes, but these are the condensed version of the minutes for the paper from the same date, May 28th, 2024. I'll move approval of the condensed version of the minutes from 528-24. I will second. Okay, thank you. We have a motion and a second. Uh, all those in favor of approving the condensed version from May 28, 2024, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Okay, we shall move on to the consent agenda which consists of the audit of city bills, pay estimate number one, the Morris Transit Garage Edition, and the item C, the gambling report. I guess I can move approval of the items on the consent agenda. I'll second. All right, we have a motion and a second on the consent agenda. I'll bring it back to the council for any discussion, any line items that you would like to talk about, now is a good time. I have none other than just a comment that it's nice to see some of the, some of the things we've allocated for, like the skid steer and the uh, lawnmower get purchased and that, wrap, that piece wrapped up, that's nice to see. Yeah. Any other further discussion? Hearing none. We have a first and a second on the items on the consent agenda. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. We shall move on to petitions, requests, and communications. We have a request from the tourism board. It's a request for marketing assistance. Becca, did you want to speak to that at all? Yeah, so the tourism board met uh, last week um, they discussed um, utilizing some of their funds for Crazy Days, Lazy Nights, which is a chamber event. Um, so they are looking, uh, in, in her request, she said there are sales at the retail stores around town, a medallion hunt. Um, nonprofits will have information and activities on Main Street. There will be a free movie in the afternoon, and at 5 o'clock, there will be a two hour live music event at East Side Park. So in their request, they said that they, um, their goal is to draw people from up to 50 miles away from Morris. Um, the one thing, like I said in the memo, the one thing that um, wasn't discussed um, as I was doing this um, memo to you is the, um, the policy for the advertising does have the following language that says examples of events that are not eligible for funding include industry specific conferences and retail events geared towards local consumers. So, um, but 
their goal is to try and get people out, out of town. But just wa I just wanted to put that in there just to note because that wasn't discussed. Yeah, it's kind of a fine line that they walk with this. Uh, but I think you know their intent is in the right place. Obviously, they're they're trying hard every year. I think if if those of us that remember crazy days, it, it back in the day it used to be a huge event, and then we kind of went, it kind of lost a little bit of its uh, luster, so to speak. But now I, I think they've slowly but surely been trying to bring back and add more things every year. So it looks like they're working hard to try to make it more of a, an event that's going to draw people from a larger distance, I guess. They meet the criteria by wanting to draw people from at least 50 miles away, so that's one of the big criteria in not being a local event. So I think that covers that mm -hmm. piece of it. And it, again, it's just, it, not just, but it's advertising for this event. Um, so having said that, I will go ahead and make a motion to, what are we doing? The request oh, with for the tier three. Yep. Yep, with the tier three. Is that what they're requesting? Yep. Okay. Tier three marketing event with two, using tourism dollars for the crazy days, lazy night event coming up at the end of January. January? Uh, yeah, January. <laughs> Let's do that. That'd be something fun. <laughs> How about July? <laughs> I will second that, and that tier three is up to $1,500. Mm -hmm. Just to clarify, anyone is. And I think it's kind of a good idea that they're, you know, their marketing is crazy days and lazy nights, so they're wrapping that entertainment into that as well this year. And, you know, that's, that'll be kind of fun, make it more of a day and night event, so. Okay, any other discussion? No, it's nice to see utilizing the event at Inside Park mm -hmm. event. For sure. Mm -hmm. There's no further discussion. We have a first and a second on that. Uh, motion to approve the request for marketing assistance from the Tourism Board. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. We shall move on to ordinances and resolutions. First up is a resolution accepting the insurance renewal proposal that was just presented to us from Sure. I mean, historically, they've done a good job. They've hit everything out of the park that we've needed to. So, um, with that, I will make a motion to approve the resolution accepting an insurance renewal. I will second that proposal. Okay. And it's through the League of Minnesota Cities, so we don't have a, a comparison quote. I guess just that's an option that we have to, to get our insurance through and normally is a, a better deal for us. So just questioning why we wouldn't have to, but it, it is through the League of Minnesota Cities. So yes, I'm very happy with the, what he was saying, the average 20% increases and our premium actually is down from what it was the last year or so. Yeah, thanks again. Like uh, Joel had said, Whitney and anybody else that's involved with that, you know, trying to keep an eye on that, that's, <coughs> that's uh, much appreciated. Okay, ordinance, uh, we have a first and a second on the resolution accepting the insurance renewal proposal from Bremer. Uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Uh, no, normally I do roll call on that, I'm sorry. We should do a roll call on that. Gotta, gotta hit it myself. We'll ask, I'll ask for roll call on that, please. Council Member Salvi? Trails? Yes. Solison? Yes. Miller? Yes. Mayor Waller? Yes. Okay. But now we can move on to the added resolutions. The first one up is uh, item B, resolution accepting a bid 
and awarding a contract for the DC Fast Charger project. You want to speak to that at all, Becca? Yeah, so um, we're getting a, an electric bus. So with that, we need um, an electric, we got a grant for an electric or a EV charger. So um, Griffin was working on this before he, he left last week. Um, he got three quotes for the fast charger, um, went with the lowest quote there at 35280 um, uh, which is with Evo Charge. So, um, asking you to accept their their bid and the contract. The contract has been approved by MnDOT. Um, they had us um, go through quite a few things to get it to what they needed it to be. This is a fast charger. It's not a solar. It's just a, a fast charger, correct? Saying that yes. Griffin was working on it. Just, yes. I, I know it's, some of our other correspondence with Griffin was he was looking at some solar at some different sites. So that's but this for the is, solar panels. This is for the actual charger in the building. Okay. That's you have to charge the bus. Yeah. But there was yep. some talk about us possibly doing some solar yes. for this also down the road. Yes. But just yep. that this yep. is just a fast this charger is for a our bus. 50 kilowatt mobile DCFC. Very good. Yes. And this is just materials. The labor is the next one, correct? So that is just for the charger and then for yep. them to install the charger. The, the next one is for the electrical work. Okay. And both will be covered by the, the state and the grant. Mm -hmm. The two separate grants, correct? We yeah. Have a motion to accept this yet, Mayor? No. I will make the motion to accept the bid and awarding the contract for the DC Fast Charger project for the low bid with Evo Charge out of Eden Prairie for the $35,280. I will second. Okay, we have a motion and a second on. A resolution, uh, item B, accepting a bid and awarding a contract for the DC Fast Charger project. And any other further discussion before we ask for roll call on that? We're going to vote on them together? Or? Nope, separately. Okay. Hearing none, we'll have roll call on that resolution, please. Councilmember Miller? Yes. Collison? Yes. Cradles? Yes. Salvi? Mayor Waller? Yes. <coughs> All right, we can move on to the item C, which is a resolution accepting a bid and awarding a contract for the electrical facility upgrade for that project. Yep, so that's that's for the electrical work for it, plus a 100-foot cord. Um, and that was to Melrose Electric was the only one who gave a quote on that. And the quote came in at, um, for both of those at 24900 Must be quite a cord. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. Was there an estimate on the cost on this, just with the one bid, on with a lot of our bids that we have uh, an engineer estimate on it, or just? You know, I don't, not that I know of. I know that, um, that I don't. I'm not sure how many he sent out. Um, this was the one that came back, which we were hoping that they would do because they're the ones that have the transit facility um, Im improvements. So it just makes sense to have them there too. But um, yeah, I didn't, I didn't have a quote on how much that would be. It's under our grant amount. That's the, uh, I guess the. Driving factor for us, to, I think, to move forward with it would be that it's under the. Uh, it'll be picked up yeah. as part of our grant. Well, I'll move on that resolution accepting a bid and awarding a contract for the electrical facility upgrade project with Melrose Electric for 25, 24900 I will second that. Okay, thank you. Any further discussion on uh, that resolution? 
Hearing none, we shall have roll call on that resolution, please. Councilman McGillickson? Yes. Miller? Yes. Salvi? Frails? Yes. Mayor Wall? Yes. Okay, that takes care of our resolutions. We shall move on to the city manager's newsletter. Well, we'll start with the airports. So the airport's doing um, an apron reconstruction and expansion project. So Riley started out there May 20th. Um, as long as, as the project isn't delayed by rain or anything, we should be completed by July 19th. <coughs> um, we're working with TKDA, um, the engineering firm, on getting our five-year plan for the airport. Um, once that's complete, we'll be meeting at the end of June with Minda Aeronautics and the FAA to kind of discuss our plans, their concerns, if they see um, anything that they feel needs to be done prior. Um, I think our apron is the last of um, a lot last of the asphalt work out there that needs to be done. That's one of their big things. They have to do that first before you do any other projects. So I think that's the last of ours. Um, but we'll have some some discussions with them um, after we meet with them and and have our five year plan set. I'd like to call an airport board meeting together just to. Um, have one, have some conversations, introduce myself to them, and then kind of have them know what the plan is at the airport for the next five years, and um, yeah, have them kind of hear what's going on. Um, and then every five years, we're required to look at doing an RFQ for airport engineers. So uh, ours, our contract with TDKA, TKDA is um, up in March, so we'll start that process this fall. To, um, to to go out and, p and pick a new air we wouldn't have to pick a new airport engineer but we have to have to go out and actually submit for bid yeah so um, a mill and overlay project so Riley's was able to start us off this summer so we um, didn't have to wait for any of our projects so our mill and overlay projects are done um, sustainability coordinator, so Griffin um, has resigned. He uh, was done last Friday, was his last day. So he'll be going to the West Central Initiative in Minnesota Climate Adaptation as their climate resilience officer. So he'll be working with a lot of numerous cities on sustainability. So we will be advertising for a new one. Uh, we do have, um, he was working off a grant and then um, received a hundred thousand dollar grant to extend the position and then um, they will be continuing on as you see later in my report they will be continuing on um, requesting uh, if you won the hundred thousand you could go for the two hundred thousand we still will be applying and, and working towards that um, and that can can be used for <coughs> for different things one of the things um, we, we put in there that it could be used to extend the position, uh, could be used for, for other things, but um, the Morris model is hoping we'll use it just to extend the position. Um, so uh, before he left, Griffin did talk to me about different cost options uh, for putting solar on the water wastewater treatment plant. Um, last time we kind of had this discussed, it, to me it didn't seem very cost effective to spend that much money to do it. Um, this one was a little bit more digestible. Um, less cost, less electric consumption that we'd get uh, payback within seven years. Still on the fence about it, but I think we can still have some conversations when a new person comes on. Um, the one that um, he did talk to me about that I'd like to, or someone when someone starts to, to kind of look into, is um, the solar at the bus garage, just because it would be about 100% paid for um, with the IRS direct payments and that pop solar payment. Um, he felt that we were going to be consuming quite a bit of electrical energy with that electric bus and the charger. So having something like that out there, if it's 100% paid for. Um, would be worth it. So um, I think when someone starts, that should be something that we um, have them start working on with that. Um, and then camp spots. So our online camping reservation system is now live. Um, so there are a few different ways to get to the reservations on our website. Um, it's at the top, it's at the how to 
how do I link, it's um, under the community link. Um, and then if you're out at the campground and you didn't realize that we now can take reservations online, there's a little QR code that you can scan and reserve your spot. So I'm very excited to have that started. I believe it's people are utilizing it and days are filling up, so that's good. And then we want to say thank you to Superior because they, um, they fixed some of our grills. Some of the bottom of our grills were falling apart and they welded them back together. So thank you to them. And then just to note, next, next week we do have that public hearing. Um, we'll be a quick short meeting just for that, but a special meeting was called to, to have that public hearing for the commission. That's 515, correct? Yes. And it sounds like the camp spot's been going over pretty good. You had quite a few uses so far? Yes, I thought so. And they can, how far out can they reserve? Through 24. Nice. Through 24. Okay. Yeah. Until our, our uh, campground closes, but yeah. Okay. So is the physical envelopes, they're gone out of the camp? Okay. There will be no confusion. Thanks. <laughs> I'm sure there'll be some growing pains, but yes, it's a nice move that you can, when you make your reservation, and know you have a campsite. When I've five, eight years ago, friends that were trying to come over and would come and it was full, and it's like, now what do you do? So mm -hmm. that's a, a super option, and looking forward to seeing it fully implemented with the upgrades that they're doing out there. It's, I think most people are used to now reserving that way too, so um, that's good. Mm -hmm. Any other questions off the city manager's newsletter? Hearing none. Um, board updates. Anybody has anything from the various boards they would like to share with the council? Now is time for that. Hearing none. Were you going to check on the Narcan? Did you find out anything? On I that didn't or? check on that. I figured when we're, right, we're when we're here tonight, tonight we, that will. That's I couldn't remember. I if think that was. Tony knows way more about that than yeah. I do, so I figured he'll be there. And, and they haven't met since our questions. last meeting. Mm -hmm. I just was. I couldn't remember what our. I wrote down our questions, so I have them for him. Super. Yeah. All right, informational items. I guess I just wanted to just remind everybody once again on the campaign signs. I've seen maybe some popping up and I'm not sure that that should be happening because I think the period is June 28th, I believe, through the 15th is when we put them up. So, and if, if they're up now, that's not a good thing. Huh? A little early. A little early, a week or so, but I guess we can pretend we didn't see it too, I guess. But <laughs> anyway, just what it's worth, wanted to give a shout out for anybody that's out there that is listening. Those are the time periods, June 28th to November 15th, 2024. All right, anything else to come before the council? Hearing none, meeting adjourned.